All right, this sun season, evolve your sun care with new Banana Boat 360 coverage. With Advanced Control Mist, it's a new way to spray. It's an all-new bottle for an all-new mist experience that smells great and is incredibly light on your skin. You can even customize your spray. Like to cover targeted areas, you just tap the trigger lightly, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long, continuous spray, ensuring long-lasting Banana Boat protection. Plus, it's refillable. From sweat-resistant sport formula to kids' SPF 50+, plus, this is sun care that'll come in handy when my kids are swimming, playing sports, when I'm hiking, when we're out at the lake, or whatever it is that we're doing outdoors. Shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. Hey, everyone. This is Jody Sweeten from the podcast How Rude, Tanneritos. I've been needing a quick getaway with my family, and the 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe is the perfect vehicle to take us there. It has standard third-row seating, so I'm able to pack my entire family, plus pets in the car, while also having enough room for our camping essentials. Available H-Track all-wheel drive will get us through any dirt trails, and available dual wireless charging pads will ensure we never have to worry about getting stuck with a dead phone in the middle of nowhere. Visit HyundaiUSA.com. Or call 562-314-4603 for more details. Hyundai, there's joy in every journey. The BMW i4 M50. It's 100% electric and 100% BMW. Experience the power of over 500 horses stampeding at a whisper as BMW M-engineered handling takes you through every twist and turn. The complete suite of intuitive technology keeps you connected. The pure performance keeps your heart racing. The BMW i4 M50. Silence has never said so much. BMW, the ultimate electric driving machine. I won't let my body outweigh, outweigh everything that I'm made of. Won't spend my life trying to change. I'm learning to love who I am. I am strong, I feel free. I know every part of me is beautiful. And I will always outweigh. If you feel it, put your hands in the air Show some love to the mirror while you're there Let's take it one day at a time Cause you and die out Happy Saturday, Outway. It is Leanne Ellington here, and I have an amazing guest, Sarai White. Hello, Sarai. Hello, Leanne. Hello, Outway. Hello. <laughs> yes. Well, we are here. We are. This is the first of a series that we are calling Beyond the Mirror, Fashion's Role in Self-Love and Body Image. And this is such a fun topic and one that I feel like hasn't really been talked about, especially in the ways that we're going to be talking about it. And we're going to dive in. But before we do that, I just wanted to set the tone for why why I asked Sarai to be on here for this specific topic. So we go way back. We've known each other for close to 15 years and yeah. we met in the fitness industry. We were both in the fitness industry. We're both not in the fitness industry anymore, really. But along that journey, you know, when we were in the thick of the fitness industry, really, you know, we talk a lot of, on this podcast about there's this kind of stereotypical definition or worldly definition of health, which is eat less, move more, change your body, all the things. And we learned those same messages for ourselves and professionally. And through our friendship over the years, we have both, we kind of sobered up, so to speak. Would you say that's a good way of saying it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we sobered up to these messages and obviously we're we're here on Outway sharing messages about how to heal from disordered eating and self-image and body image struggles. And so um, there's so many twists and turns that happen in between that. But she and I really, are, our values have aligned, our thought processes on how to have a happy, healthy relationship with food, how to heal from any lingering disorder, the body image, the body dysmorphia, the hyper obsession when it comes to fitness, like all these things that she and I both went through in different capacities. We are now on the other side of it and we see, for lack of a better way of saying it, how dangerous a lot of this can be. And then oftentimes you, there's a lot of healing that has to happen off the back of it. So before we dive into talking about how to really use fashion and changing your relationship with what you wear in order to change your relationship with yourself and your body image, before we do that, I really want to set the context and, and just let Sarah I share a little bit how she went from the fitness industry to the fashion industry and what brought us to this discussion today. So can you just give us a little bit of a a run through of how this all went down for you? 
Yeah, well, so as far as fashion, I've always been into fashion. When I was eight years old, my mom started to teach me how to sew. And she says I hated it and I didn't want to, but she forced me. <laughs> and I'm really glad she did because it's such Thank a you, I, it's, yes, it's such a gift that I can do this. So um that's how I kind of got into it. So it's always been on my radar as something that I enjoyed doing. And so then, you know, but then I got into the fitness industry and that took up most of my time. And then during the pandemic, um, I was able to, obviously we all had more time. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to dive back into sewing. I, I had always sewn, but I was like, I'm going to just like do it all the time. So I did. And then I um, got noticed by the company that I'm with now. And they said, Hey, would you like to be on our influencer team? And so that's when you, you make things that are beautiful. And then you like take pictures and you promote. So I was so honored, like, oh my goodness, me, like you want, you want me. And so I made the team and I've been on it ever since. And then at, um, at some point they asked me if I would be willing to learn how to design and to be one of their designers. So that's how I kind of crossed over from fitness into fashion. So great. And we just talked about this actually before we started recording and we've had so many different conversations about how to change your relationship with your body through movement, through fitness, maybe how to recover from a punishment driven relationship with exercise. So we're actually going to do another series on that. But one of the things I've always loved about you, Sarai, is, you know, the way the intent that shapes the content, even when you were in the fitness industry, you've been so passionate and vocal about helping women embrace strength and embrace, you know, feeling really capable in their bodies and embracing their curves. And it's never been this matter of like chasing skinny and chasing lean. You've always been helping women embrace whatever size they're in and helping them really feel at home in that. So how would you say that's kind of influenced your relationship with fashion coming from that place in in the fitness world? You know, in the fitness industry, there is, like you said, there's so much, I mean, I guess toxic, is that the right word? There's so much toxic yeah. messaging for so many of us. And so we're told that we, we're we not supposed to be happy with ourselves until we look a certain way. And that spills over into fashion. But I used to run the uh, host these really large events where we would have professional photographers come on and makeup artists, stylists, all this. And we would have the women just like get themselves dolled up and look amazing and take pictures. And it was the most look forward to day of the whole year, as far as, you know, their fitness studio goes. And they just embraced like they loved how they looked, they loved the pictures and just, you could see the confidence of how they walked around for like a week after. And so I really began to see that it's not just like, you know, there's, there's always a goal to chase, but it's not just about reaching the goal. It's also about appreciating where you are along the way. And so when they were able to like in the bodies they had now, even if they still had more goals to put themselves together and then feel really confident, like that was just such a mind shift for them. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's one of those things like I always I remember when I was in the fitness industry, people would say to me, oh, Leanne, like when I lose the weight, then I'll care about what I look like. And it's like, no, you're living your life right now. And this golden carrot, what makes you think you're going to feel happy, beautiful, confident if you don't start experiencing it now? And we're going to do a whole episode about the beliefs that stand in the way of this. But one of the big ones, too, and especially in the industry right now around self-love is like, well, if I love myself, I shouldn't care what I look like or I shouldn't like like want to change and maybe that's superficial or maybe that's, you know, vain, but we're here to say no, like caring about how you look and how you feel is not vain. You're a woman. And there's a way to appreciate the beauty that you have right now. And obviously it's an inner beauty. It's an outer beauty. It's it, they, they go hand in hand, but part of it is embracing who you are right now, independent of what size you are, independent of your weight, independent of really where you are in your relationship with food and independent of your relationship with your body. They can coexist. And it's such a beautiful way to actually take step towards connecting with yourself and healing. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive on in, you know, talking about this idea of healing your relationship with your body through fashion. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you, when you talk about that, when you think about that in your newfound career as well, actually, did you, did, could you share a little bit about, um, before we segue into that, what are you doing right now in the fashion world with Style Magnolia? So I am a, a designer on their team. So um, I will, I'm the one that's going to be designing fashion for them. So right now they do a lot of bags and things like that. So we'll be doing fashion clothing. So I make patterns. I don't know if there's any sewist in your audience, but I make patterns that people can then purchase and create their own beautiful clothing, which is something that I so love about 
the fashion industry or the sewing industry is that we don't have size, you know, we don't have a size, we just make what fits. And I yes. think that's something that I was really embracing in 2020 when I was really starting to get back into it. And it's just like, it's just size me, like it doesn't have to yes. be like I wear a size this or that, you know, you can just wear whatever. But um, so we have a really wide range of sizes. I think it's triple extra small up to, I think I want to say six X. So embrace, you know, very inclusive and body sizes so that women of all sizes can make beautiful things for themselves. It's so amazing. And I don't know about anybody listening, but to me, if I'm going to be buying from a brand, knowing that somebody who actually understands the journey of what it's like to go home and find a home in your own body, having somebody like that behind the designs, it means so much more. It really feels like you're in good hands, so to speak. So I'm so yeah. excited for this new venture for you. Well, you know, I was going to say one of the things that I'm really striving for is kind of, you know, not ignoring the fact that there are things that women would rather accentuate and maybe not accentuate about yeah. their bodies. Like there's nothing wrong with that. It's like not a dirty word to be like, oh, I'd rather not, you know, show off cer certain things. And so a lot of times fashion though, is just so generic. Like you have yeah. to have a flat stomach to wear this outfit. My goal is to design clothing that women can wear no matter what their size, that they can adapt to fit. And that just addresses the real thing. Like maybe we do need a little bit more coverage in the back so that, you know, things are a little bit more covered back there or things like, you know, just not ignoring the fact that we women have real issues with our bodies that we want to address with our clothing as well. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it is one of those things of meet yourself where you are. Like we all have our own things that we're working on. We are all constant works in progress. And part of it is, you know, give yourself the the permission to be where you are and meet yourself where you are. It doesn't mean that you're going to be there next year, you right. know, but giving yourself that permission to say, you know what, I'm not necessarily ready to accentuate my arms right now, but I love my collarbone and mm -hmm. I'd love a good off the shoulder or whatever it is. Right. There's always something that you can find. All right, sunny weather is upon us and the sun out means more time outside. My kids have sports. There's also swimming, hiking, going to the lake. And I'm always on the lookout for sun care that's easy for all of us. And that's where the new Banana Boat 360 coverage is coming to the rescue. It smells good. It is incredibly light on your skin. It is not greasy, which I think we can all appreciate. And it's an all new bottle with advanced control mist. It's a new way to spray. Better control means coverage that you can count on with a precision pump to get all your big and little spots. I mean, you can literally customize the spray. You just gotta tap the trigger lightly to cover targeted areas, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long continuous spray ensuring long-lasting Banana Boat protection. Banana Boat 360 coverage is also aerosol-free, which is a plus in my book for sure. It's available in Banana Boat's high-performance, water-resistant sport formula, and pediatrician-tested kids SPF 50. You can shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. So I love traveling and coming home to my bed because it's comfy and familiar. I love crawling into it. Well, what if you could take your bed on the road with you so that way you got good night's sleep while you're on a trip? And it's not your entire bed, but at least your bedding, which is the best part. Let me introduce you to Cozy Earth's luxurious bedding. Now, Cozy Earth is travel-friendly and hassle-free, and the bedding comes in these adorable totes, which makes it really easy for you to take it on trips with you. They also have really amazing loungewear, so if you're on a long flight, you can stay cool and comfy with Cozy Earth's temperature-regulating bamboo joggers and pullover crew, and it'll add a touch of style to your travel ensemble as well. So whether you're exploring stuff near or far, take a little bit of home with you. Cozy Earth has everything you need to turn every moment into pure bliss. Discover your next destination for ultimate comfort at Cozy Earth. Visit CozyEarth.com and use our code OUTWAY at checkout to get 35% off. And let them know that we sent you after you check out. Are you tired of your scented cleaning products smelling and cleaning like meh? Then it's time for an upgrade with the power of Clorox Sentiva. With an uplifting scent that smells like coconut, Clorox Sentiva gives you powerful clean like Clorox, but a feeling like <sighs> being transported to a tropical island retreat. Imagine putting your phone on Do Not Disturb, tuning out all the constant, just the feeling of warm sand in between your toes and a fruity drink in your hand. 
the ones with the little umbrella. Refresh your home to feel like an all-inclusive vacation by getting Clorox Sentiva. Also available in grapefruit and lavender scents at a nearby retail store. So bring us into this idea of if you were to invite somebody, let's say somebody's listening and they're like, you know what, I've always shied away from fashion. And we're going to get into the beliefs in, in another episode, but I've always shied away from fashion. Maybe it's been an air quotes trigger. You know, maybe I I'll, just to paint that scene. I know for me, this was something I really had to step into. One of the earliest memories I have, and I know it happened many times before that, was I was shopping for my bat mitzvah dress. I was in seventh grade. So I was almost 13. And the size that I was did not fit into the girl section or even the junior section. And so I had to go to the woman's section to shop for a bat mitzvah dress. And it was, I don't want to say traumatic, but it was a dramatic experience for me because fashion was not really available like it is today in in inclusive sizes. And so the style of, you know, a third, even a 20, 30, 40, 60 year old woman did not cover the style of this 12-year-old who my bat mitzvah was like the biggest thing in, in my life at the time, right? And I remember store after store, like there was times when I would just be like, mom, I'm going to meet you in the car. I just can't do this anymore. And I would go and I would cry. And it would further potentiate this storyline of like, this is that's me. I'm different. I'm wrong. I'm broken. There's something wrong with me. I The spotlight's going to be on me. I, I would go dramatic and say, I can't, I, my, I, we need to cancel my bat mitzvah, you know? Yeah. So this thing that was supposed to be this amazing, happy time and even this experience bonding with my mom, right? Yeah. Like we could get my mom on here and she would have her own stories because it broke her heart. So, I mean, everybody has some version of that. Well, not everyone. Yeah. A lot of women have some version of that where fashion is a very sensitive subject. It's a touchy subject and they don't even, they almost avoid it. And so they wear, kind. I know for me, I would wear frumpy clothes. I would wear men's sweatshirts. I would wear baggy jeans and sweatpants. And so talk to us about this idea, this concept of meeting us where we are. And what if we could look at using fashion to heal our relationship with our body. Talk to us a little bit about that. Just intro us to that concept. Yeah. So like you were saying, we, uh, most of us have an experience of shopping and just it being a total disaster <laughs> in our minds. I mean, I can even say that recently. Like you, I just, cause I've sewn for so long, I hardly ever shop. So I went shopping and I was just like, this is horrible. Like, I don't want to do this, <laughs> but it's not, but I, I knew I had a different outlet. So I don't, I didn't have to struggle with it. But yeah, when you, when you put on something that makes you feel fantastic, it shifts your whole energy. And, you know, one thing that you mentioned earlier in the conversation that at one point I wanted to bring out is where we're taught that if we love ourselves, then we shouldn't care about how we look or like, it's not important. But if we think about for those with children, they want their kids to look, you know, they want them to look cute. Like they enjoy putting them in, you know, these cute little outfits and like, you know, just going all over the top because they just love to look at them and look at their the beauty of them and their love for them. I mean, even those of us that just have pets, you know, we want to put like a little bandana or a bow or get a new collar. So we know that there is some kind of joy that we get from making things beautiful. And I think that that could also be ourselves. Like we don't have to just ignore ourselves because we're supposed to just like ourselves the way that we are. Like that is a beautiful concept, but you can also take the time to beautify yourself and to enhance that. And I think that that is one of the things that fashion can do is just to make you look in the mirror wherever you are and, and just feel really cute and and maybe cute's not the word, but beautiful and confident and positive about where you are right now. Absolutely. And yes, for some of you, you want to feel cute. Some of you want to feel beautiful. Some of you want to feel words like sexy. And there's nothing wrong with any of these things, right? I think the big theme that I want people to get, and you just said, there was so much gold in what you just said. You know, first and foremost, it is a, it's a reframe, right? So if currently fashion is something that kind of makes you quiver or you want to avoid it or you want to run away, what if you could open your mind's eye to the fact that it could be the gateway to you healing what you're avoiding? or healing what you're currently shaming, or finding beauty in what you're currently deeming ugly, unfit, unworthy, fill in the blanks, right? And everything I'm right. saying is air quotes. It's the conversations in our head and, you know, right. we all have our own. So that's thing number one. It's a reframe, right? But the second thing, the big thing is like also giving yourself permission to care, right? We talked right. about this back with Amy in the t- in one of the two things can be true at the same time episodes. You can be confident and love yourself and still care what you look like and care how 
how you feel in your body, right? You're allowed to have both. So giving yourself permission to look at like feeling good right now and caring how you feel, whether it's hair, makeup, beauty side of it. Today we're talking about fashion, but it's really all related. Like you are allowed to care. And in fact, it's something that we want to give you permission to embrace, you know? And then also, you, you know, one thing too, just to kind of touch on this a little, a little segue, and I touched on this in a previous episode as well. When I was carrying around, you know, anywhere from 80 to 100 extra pounds on my body, and I say extra, that's my definition of it. It was just more that served me. I didn't feel good. I had pain. I wasn't I wasn't healthy, right? But I also lost, like, the feminine elements of Leanne Ellington. It was almost like I was in my masculine. Like, I was wearing big clothes. I didn't feel feminine, confident, beautiful. And there was almost, like, this transformation that after I, I, I did my own little beauty fashion experience, experiment. This is probably 10 years ago. Um, it started with lipstick because I like was such a chapstick kind of gal. And I was like, I'm going to see what happens when I wear lipstick. And it was just like night and day. And then I had to kind of re-get to know my body through fashion because I wasn't hiding it anymore. Right. So I want you to also, if you're listening to this, think about like, what are the elements of you that you kind of like not let die, but like you've let them be in the back corner collecting cobwebs, right? Maybe there's a, f- a feminine element of you. Maybe there's a playful element of for you. Maybe it's like Sarah and it's this creative element, like her new, like newfound and like kind of reinvigorated love for fashion really inspired this whole new creative chapter in her life, which literally changed the trajectory of her career. Right. right? So I want you all to give yourself permission. Like it's not it's not uh, catty or vain or superficial. It is a part of you that could be really excavated if you give yourself permission to be there. And then the the third big thing that we talked about is like, it's a right now conversation. You know, no longer future pacing of when I lose the weight, then I'll take care of myself. When I X, Y, and Z, then I'll feel beautiful. It's like, no, give yourself permission to go enjoy who you are right now. And there's something to be found right now that you don't even know that you're missing. Right. And, you know, I, I think about how, why do we even have these messages? And I'm listening to the things that you're saying. Why do we even have these messages that it is a waste of time to, or vain or whatever, to want to beautify yourself and take care of yourself? Like, where did those messages come from? Yeah. And I think so often, if you don't fit a certain beauty standard or a certain body standard, you're, we're told that you don't matter. So everything that we, um, you know, especially 20 years ago, all the, all the representation that we saw was a very particular look. And if you didn't fit that look, like why, why bother? Why, why try? And I think that's just carried on for a lot of us. And so we just automatically assume that taking any time to take care of ourselves, like it's not for us, you know, it's just not, it's not a thing that's for us and it really can be and should be. I agree. Yeah. Like a lot of what's out there right now, we just take it as gospel because somebody has a million followers on Instagram and they said it. We're inviting you all to choose your beliefs, choose what you believe about this, choose what you say about it. And honestly, just go try it on. If like for me, if when I think about trying it on, I'm like, okay, if I were to continue going down that road of just like hiding behind, you know, frumpy men's sweatpants, did it make me feel good? No, Mm -hmm. versus when I actually like took a shower and did my hair and put on some cute clothes and found clothes that accentuate my curves, which we're going to talk about in another episode, you know, did it make me feel better? Absolutely. So it's like, try it on, you know, see what works for you. No pun intended. Try it on. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And you know, it's so funny. So in the, over the summer, um, because, you know, after the pandemic, obviously we all worked from home, stayed from home, all that kind of stuff. So as much as I love fashion, I had a closet full of beautiful clothes. I was making beautiful things, but I was just hanging out and workout clothes all day or just like hanging out. I call them schlumpadunk clothes. I was just like, just so grumpy. And so over the summer, I challenged myself. I said, for 30 days, every single day, I'm going to get fully dressed. I'm going to, you know, I didn't have to do like full makeup or anything, but I was going to get fully dressed and just see, just see what changed. I didn't have any expectations. I didn't have any goals other than just get dressed every day. So I did that. And what I noticed is my motivation to do things spiked a lot. Also the way that I interact with people when I was out was very different. So I'm usually very much just like within myself and kind of withdrawn, but I noticed that when I was feeling really good about myself, I would be like, Hey, how are you? And like strike up a conversation and have a conversation. And I was like, you know, this, this is actually me. Like I I am a more withdrawn person in general, but I'm not like (laughs) antisocial. And so 
I didn't think that I was particularly drawing away from people, but I realized that when I was just feeling really confident and really beautiful, that I was more willing to make eye contact and talk to people and meet people. And it was just a really fun experience. Experiment. Oh my gosh. I love it. You you just reminded me, have you ever heard of the lab coat effect in psychology? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, you know, dressing, what do they say? Dress for the job that you want, but there's this lab coat effect in psychology where there's studies that show, and I don't have the, you know, stats in front of me, even just for example, when they put on a white lab coat, they mm-hmm. found that cognitive performance and um, like focus based exercises were, were accentuated just based on the white, the white lab coat effect. Right. And it's, it's, it's exactly what you just experienced. When you are actually taking pride in your appearance, you have an energy about you you a sense of you and you know again yes it's energetic it's a confidence but like I could also see like focus and attention and cognition and all of that because again it's this entire sensory experience yes yes and it and you the way that you look people in the eye and then they look at you and you pick up on different cues and like uh personality and just it was just a really beautiful experience and um yeah, I I recommend it if anyone wants to kind of, you know, have an experiment yeah. of doing it. And it can be different for everyone. So I had a client that was like, I want to do it with you, but I don't, you know, my clothes aren't all dressy because I tend to, le- I lean toward dressy. I like to be dressy. Yeah. But I was like, what, you know, it can be whatever works for you, but your definition of getting up and feeling put together, great experiment. Highly recommend. Absolutely. And we're going to go in depth in, in part three of this about like what, what to do, how to do it, how to change your relationship with your body through a fashion experiment. But next episode, we are going to cover the beliefs that might get in the way because a lot of this might sound okay that sounds great in theory Sarah and Leanne but like I have a lot of you know again self-image and body image stuff that's keeping me from getting there so we're going to go into some of the specific beliefs that come alongside that in part two of our series but in the meantime where can people find you they can find my designs. Um, when I release my first one, they'll find my designs at the Styled Magnolia. Um, that's the styledmagnolia.com. And personally, you can find me on Instagram at Get Fit with Sarai. And the fit comes from obviously, I did come from the fitness world, but these days it's more about your overall fitness. It's you know, embracing your body, mental, uh, you know, just feeling good mentally, and of course, fashion. Love it. Three-dimensionally fit. I love it. Well, thank you so much for being here. We're going to be back for next episode of this series. So stay tuned and we'll talk to you then. Bye. Bye. All right. This sun season, evolve your sun care with new Banana Boat 360 coverage. With Advanced Control Mist, it's a new way to spray. It's an all-new bottle for an all-new mist experience that smells great and is incredibly light on your skin. You can even customize your spray. Like to cover targeted areas, you just tap the trigger lightly, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long, continuous spray, ensuring long-lasting banana boat protection. Plus, it's refillable. From sweat-resistant sport formula to kids' SPF 50+, plus. This is sun care that'll come in handy when my kids are swimming, playing sports, when I'm hiking, when we're out at the lake, or whatever it is that we're doing outdoors. Shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. There are some things that are too good to keep a secret. Like how your Amex Platinum card helps you have the perfect trip. I'd like to check into the Centurion Lounge. Or how it seems like you always get those hard-to-snag tables. Ooh, yum. And how you get the most out of select can't miss events. With access to the Centurion Lounge, Resi Priority Notified, and Amex card member benefits at select events, you'll have to share. That's the powerful backing of American Express. Terms apply. Learn more at americanexpress.com slash with Amex. Tired of restless nights? At Lisa, we know good sleep is essential for mental, physical, and emotional health. From memory foam mattresses to hybrids that keep you cool all night long, Lisa's mattresses offer exceptional comfort and support with free delivery and 100 nights to try out your mattress in the comfort of your home. For a limited time, save up to $700 off select mattresses plus two free pillows. Go to lisa.com slash iHeart for an additional $50 off mattresses and select goods. Exclusions apply. See lisa.com for more details.